Hey everyone, David C. Anderson from the Knife Center coming at you from the bunker as I'm working from home right now. In this next edition of our How to Sharpen a Knife series, we're going to go over how you can sharpen your blades using nothing but a leather strop. Let's check it out. Now a good strop can be used to augment pretty much any other type of sharpener out there. No matter what the grind of your knife is, no matter how you put the, uh, the edge on it itself, they're all going to benefit from using a good strop at the end, kind of putting that final finish on the edge. In addition to that, you can also use a strop as your standalone sharpening method with just a few little tweaks. And that's actually the way I like to do my edges these days. I'm pretty much in a stropping only sort of camp. So first I'll show you how to use a strop to augment your existing sharpener, and then I'll show you that little tweak I was talking about that'll let you use this as your standalone do everything sharpener. Now a strop is generally very easy to use once you get the hang of it, and they're usually pretty affordable too. I've got four here in front of me I'm going to show you right now. The first is the Benchmade EDC Edge Maintenance Tool, which is actually built for them by WorkSharp, and they're definitely great makers of sharpening products, and this is no exception. If I fold it open, you can see I've got a strop here on one side, and it's actually been preloaded with black abrasive compound. I'll have a little bit more on that later. And then on the other side, I've got a ceramic rod, and it's even got some angle guides over there. Now, if you want to know more on how you might use that ceramic rod, you can check out the first video in our sharpening series on whetstones. It's going to go over all the basics and the methodology that you'd be able to apply to that ceramic rod here. Now, I fold it back up. You can see there's a pocket clip there, which makes it very easy to have on you pretty much all the time. I mean, it's smaller than the pocket knife you're carrying anyway, unless you're a Case Peanut fan, but I digress. Now it's a little bit of a pricier unit. This comes in at about $50 right now, but there's no more convenient way to carry a strop that I know of. Next up is the Flex Strops Signature Field Strop. A little bit bigger, but still very portable. In terms of the actual amount of leather we've got, we're about uh, seven inches by one and a half inches worth of leather. So it's gonna take fewer strokes than that little Benchmade unit. And this one is two-sided. You can see we've got black compound on one side and green compound on the other. This one definitely has affordability going for it as well. It comes in at about 18 bucks. Like I said, a little bit easier to use in terms of the amount of work it's going to take to actually finish off your edges, but still pretty easy to throw in a bag or pack and take with you. Next up, I've got the JRE Industries Strop Bat. A little bit more expensive. This comes in at $35. Not quite as portable for sure, but definitely finished very nicely with this good uh, elliptical handle here on the end. As you can tell, this has four sides with three different grits of, uh, of abrasive compound on it. We've got black, green, and then the finer white, and then finally just a plain leather for the final finishing. It's also got a nice lanyard loop here at the end with some cordage pre-installed. Makes it very easy to hang, and I actually use this in my kitchen to put, my, to put the final edges on my kitchen blades before I go to use it each time. I tend to use this instead of the, uh, the chef's steel or the honing steel that you see a lot of folks like to use. Now, another advantage of this bat style of strop is you can actually lay it flat on your work surface and kind of use it like a bench strop. If you're more used to like a bench stone type of whetstone that sits stationary, this might be a little more comfortable, a little more easy to use. Finally, I've got one more in a style that's known as a paddle strop. And I actually made this one myself. They are pretty easy to make if you know what you're doing. This style is generally two-sided, as you can see this one is, with a handle here on the end. And on this particular one that I made, you can see I've got a little wing nut here and a few extra little bits of hardware. And I'll get to what that's for a little bit later. As you can see, I've also loaded this with black compound on one side and green on the other. And if you're looking for a source for that compound, you can actually get it from the Knife Center as well. We sell these six packs of Marbles Abrasive Stropping Compound, and you can get them in various different grits or in this assortment of six different grits in one package right here. This is actually the one I like to recommend generally because it's got a bunch that you can play around with, but most importantly, it's got that green and black compounds, which really is all you absolutely need. Those two are going to cover your bases really well. And even though these look fairly small, they're going to last an awful long time. Now, when you're making your own strop or if you bought a strop that isn't preloaded with compound and you want to load it on, essentially you're going to draw it on like it's a crayon. And for me, I like to use the smooth side of the leather for the green compound and the more ragged side for the black compound, which has a little bit more grit than the green compound, which is kind of a higher, a, a final polishing grit. 
Now, if you're having trouble drawing it on, it can help to warm the end of the stick of compound up, whether you're using a heat gun or a blow dryer, or even if you're being careful, like the very end of the, uh, the flame on a candle, you can soften that up a little bit and it'll spread on a little bit easier. And once you've done that, while it's still soft, you're gonna wanna take the edge of a knife and really press down, working that compound into the leather. Best part is, you're probably only gonna need to do that one time. It's not something you're gonna have to continually clean off and redo. Occasionally, you may wanna kinda of touch it up a little bit, add a little bit here if it's getting thin or really worn out, but really, it's not gonna to have to be done all that often. Now, I've got a few different knives here in front of me to use as examples, but as I mentioned earlier, Pretty much any type of sharpened edge is gonna benefit from being used on a strop. But there's one in particular that you're only gonna to wanna to use a strop on, and that is the convex geometry that comes right down to the edge with no type of secondary bevel. I'm talking like the way that Felicneven and Bark River do their knives. Now because the leather has a little bit of give to it, it's gonna do a really good job of conforming to that apple seed-like shape of that edge on a convex geometry without actually putting a flat spot in your bevel like a stone would. Some other types of knives that also really especially benefit from a good stropping are the types of knives where the edge itself is convex, such as this LT Wright Gen 5 that I've got here. Because of the way that they grind their final bevels in, these knives are really happy when being used with a strop. Now even an old school open L knife also is really conducive to stropping because they typically have very, very thin edges, such as this carbon steel number eight that I've got right here. But anything from those simple carbon steels all the way up to a modern super steel like the 20CV on this Knife Center exclusive Kershaw bare knuckle, the strop is gonna be very good on any of them. All right, enough talk, let's get down to some technique and I'm gonna be using the JRE Industries strop bat for the first part of the demonstration. Starting, of course, with the most aggressive grit that you've got on the abrasive compounds, in this case, the black compound. Now, unlike with a traditional sharpening stone or a wet stone where you push the knife in towards the edge, you're actually gonna be pulling away from the edge when you use a strop. Now, the key to getting good results from your strop is gonna come from the amount of pressure you use, which is gonna be very light, as well as maintaining the proper angle. But because of that give to the leather, the angle is actually a little bit less important than it is with a whetstone because there's a certain amount of forgiveness built in to using a strop. But as you're getting used to it, in order to find your angle, what you can do is rest the blade on your strop and tilt it forward and then push edge in like you're not supposed to, just a little bit. And if the edge catches on the leather, then you're too steep and you need to shallow things out until you can no longer catch. And once you've got your pressure and your angle figured out, you're ready to start. Simply place the blade on your strop. I'm gonna start at the heel, pull it back towards yourself, moving the blade down as you go. Now, as you get to the belly portion here, make sure you're rotating the blade around. You can kind of think of it as sort of maintaining about a 90 degree angle towards the direction of the strop. But as you angle that, that's gonna ensure that you still make proper contact there out near the tip. Now, even though I just showed you stropping from the heel to the tip, you can also go tip to heel. No one way is more right than the other. You can do either method, whichever one's more comfortable to you. Just maintain, again, the same types of angles you were when you're going heel to tip, just in reverse. Maintain your 90 to the direction of the strop. You can actually also do both if you want, rather than doing just one exclusively. And that could help to maintain proper amount of contact throughout the edge. Maybe if you're missing it when you're going in one way, when you come back in the other direction, you might hit some of those areas that you could be missing. And that pressure really is so very important. When I say light, I really mean very light. Pretty much just the weight of the blade is gonna be enough. You don't wanna push in very hard at all, because if you do, you actually run the risk of the leather kind of curling over the edge and blunting it, rounding it over, which that's not gonna do what you want it to do. Now, if you're still not sure about your angle, you can always do one of my favorite tricks that I mention a lot. You can actually take a black permanent marker like a Sharpie and actually draw in on the edge itself. Take a few strokes along the strop and then you can check to see if you've removed the, the Sharpie marker successfully. And if you have, you're at the right angle. But if you've not, you're gonna be able to tell how you need to adjust to hit the right angle. Once you're comfortable doing this, you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing on the other side, going away from you. And there's no hard and fast rule about how many times you wanna do this per side, but you're gonna start alternating one side after the other till you get where you need to go. 
Now, if it's just a quick touch up, it may only require a couple of strokes on each side. And in fact, you may not even need to start with the black. You might be able to start with the, uh, with the green instead, which is a little bit finer. Again, it all depends on the state of your edge to begin with. But if I'm starting from a full sharpening and then I've moved to my strop, I'm gonna typically, for me, what I've found that works, I like to do at least 20 strokes on each side of the blade. Once done, I'll move up to the next grit, which is the green compound in this case. Now, it's not always a hard and fast uh, rule either. Sometimes, depending on the manufacturer, the colors don't always correspond the way other manufacturers' colors correspond. But with this marble set that we sell, the black and the green is gonna be the order you're, go you're gonna wanna use from the heavier to the finer grit. Now I'll do my 20 strokes per side on the green. Now if I'm just touching up and I didn't need to start with the black and I only need a few strokes here, that's fine. But if I have gone with any type of heavier grit, whether it's sandpaper or something else, I'm gonna wanna do a full 20 once I go to the finer because I wanna completely refine out those scratches from the heavier grit compound. Now, once you've hit your 20 strokes per side on this green, you should be at a hair shaving sharp level if you've done everything right up to this point. Now, to check your final edge, you can use a piece of uh, copier paper, the thinner the better, because you're able to really lightly move the blade through the paper, moving it along the whole edge, and that way you're gonna be able to see if you have any dead spots that maybe need a little bit more work. Now, as I mentioned, the green compound here should get you to hair shaving sharp, but if you wanna go even further, you can move to the white side, which is a little bit finer still. And then you could finish off with the plain leather, which is about as slick as you're gonna get, and you should be hitting some scary sharp levels at that point. Now, to turn your strop into a do-it-all sharpening system, it's gonna require the addition of one thing, and that one thing is sandpaper. And I'm talking about the type of wet dry variety that you can find at hardware stores or auto body shops or of course the internet. Basically, you're gonna take your sheet and cut it down to fit whatever strop you're using. It can be held in place with your hands or even with like rubber bands in some of these cases. Or in the case of my homemade strop, I've actually added that hardware to it in order to clamp it down. Now I've got a piece of 800 grit paper here, which is usually plenty. Although sometimes if the edge is really far gone, if you've got some chips in it that you need to work out, I'll start with something like a 320. And that 320 to 800 combination is a really good pairing that's gonna get you to where you need to be to start using the strop. So I'll just clamp this in here, tighten that down there. And then I add just a binder clip to the end. I find this works pretty well, but you don't need something so elaborate. Like I said, a, uh, a nice tight set of rubber bands wrapped around something like this JRE strop bat with a properly cut down piece is gonna work just fine. Now, once you've got that sandpaper clip, it's essentially gonna be the same process that you're using if you're just doing the stropping. You're gonna place your knife and pull away from the edge as many times as it takes, only this time we're actually looking for that burr on the blade itself. Now, if you remember our whetstone video where I talked a little bit about that burr, essentially, think of your edge apex like this triangle here. As you sharpen one side, you're gonna be pushing a little bit of metal past the apex, and that's your burr. And you wanna get that consistent along the entire side. Once you're there, you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing to the opposite side, working that burr until it's back over on the opposite side. Again, going for consistency, and you're gonna kinda of wanna to try and remove the same amount of metal from both sides as you work towards that consistent burr. Once you've gotten things consistent on both sides, you're gonna to wanna to do alternating strokes, and I'll use that magic number 20 again until you refine that burr down and you've got the edge where you need it to be. Once you've done that, just remove your sandpaper and proceed to stropping just like we showed at the beginning of the video, starting with your black compound and then proceeding to your green and then finer and finer as you see fit. For me, thanks to the versatility of a good stropping system, the ease of use, and most importantly, the effectiveness, it all comes together to make a strop my preferred method for sharpening a knife these days. It's really easy to use on the go. In fact, you can even improvise a strop if you happen to wear a leather belt and don't have anything else on you. It actually acts very similar to a barber's strop or a hanging strop, which I actually didn't uh, really cover, but the principles are essentially the same. You can even load it up with compound if you prefer. In fact, I keep a loaded hanging strop in my office next to my desk, so I can just take a few licks and hone my edges day to day to make sure they're scary sharp. 
The only thing different from a standard strop or a standard rigid strop versus a hanging strop is you're gonna want to hold the strop under a lot of tension. You wanna pull it as tight as you can and you're actually gonna bring the knife in at a much shallower angle because there's still, even if you're super tight, there's gonna be more give to it because of the actual nature of the belt and you don't wanna roll that edge over. Now, if you're keen to get started and learn how to use a strop, you'll be able to find all of this stuff you see in front of me at the Knife Center, except for that homemade piece right there, uh, as well as a selection of hanging strops and a bunch of different strops besides these as well. Make sure to leave links in the description. It'll take you over to the Knife Center and you can check those out there if you wanna see more. And as always, I recommend while you're over there that you sign up for our Knife Rewards program because you might as well earn some free money if you're gonna be buying a knife or a sharpener anyway. In the meantime, if you've got any questions, go ahead and leave those in the comments. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. I hope you all are staying safe, sane, and sanitary out there. See you next time.